All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today, I thought I'd do a quick video about the best convertible sports cars you can buy on a budget. And yes, that is the side from a Nissan Navara beside my desk. Now, I love a convertible. I know here in the northwest of England, you can't use them every day because the weather's always miserable. But on those odd days when you can, you just can't beat them. So I've made a list of six convertible sports cars that I would actually buy with my own money. Right, first one then, the Peugeot 307C. Just kidding. Imagine doing a list of the best convertible sports cars you can buy and then including a Peugeot 307cc. Now, the first one is the E46 BMW convertible. Specifically the 330. I've had loads of those and I just think they're great cars. The E46 was the 3 Series which ran from 1998 until 2006. I was looking at these recently, I don't know why because I've got no particular use for it, but I just think the 330 convertible is one of the best sports cars you can buy on a budget. They're at that point now, they're right at the bottom of the depreciation curve. You can pick them up for next to nothing. And in the very near future, they'll start to creep up in value. So don't say I didn't warn you. Early examples are getting on in age a bit. They're over 20 years old now. So I would say I'd probably avoid an early one. But what I would do is go for a post facelift model. So from late 2003, they facelifted it. It got different headlamps, different indicators, slightly different interior. The whole thing just looked a little bit more modern. So I would say try and go for something like an 04 or 05 if you go for an 06, then you're into high road tax. So an 0405, I think, is the sweet spot. The three litre straight six petrol engine is a gem. They're really reliable. It produces about 230 horsepower. They sound good, they go well, and they're fun to drive. You can pick them up from around three and a half thousand pounds, but what I would do is spend between five and six and get yourself a nice low mileage example. Number two, now this is an interesting one. I didn't realize how cheap these were. It's the Audi S4. You can pick these up from as little as £6,000, and that's just mind-blowing. £6,000 for a German, well-built, four-seat convertible with a V8 up front and Audi's famous quattro all-wheel drive system. I just think you can't go wrong. They're good to drive, they're very fast in a straight line, and they sound awesome. They might not be the best on fuel, but listen, this isn't the kind of car that you're going to do 10,000 miles a year in. You're just going to use it whenever it's dry. So does 16, 17 MPG really matter? I don't think it does for this kind of car. Right, now on to number three. Now, number three also has four circles on the grill. That is the Audi TTS. These are great cars. You can pick them up from as little as £10,000, and I just think that's a proper bargain. You get a two-litre turbocharged petrol engine up front, which produces about 275 horsepower. They sound good. They're quite reliable. They're also quite frugal if you drive them sensibly. They're just a really good all-rounder. And they're all-wheel drive. Again, they're quattro. The only downside is you'll have to put up with people saying, oh, have you just opened a salon? Or, you know, generally just questioning your sexuality but just ignore them. They probably drive a Citroen Picasso anyway. And the TTS is a great car, so just ignore them. Next up, number four, is the Porsche Boxster. Now, I love the Boxster. I genuinely prefer it to the 911. It does almost everything that you'd want from a 911 for a fraction of the price. The build quality is superb, the interior is nice, they make a nice noise, they handle brilliantly. Personally, I'd try and go for a 987 model. They look a whole lot better than the 986. The headlamps are better, the interior is better. The whole thing's just much more modern. The other good thing about buying a used Boxster is that most Boxsters are owned by enthusiasts who polish them every Sunday and keep them locked away in the garage, so they're usually maintained really well. The chances of you buying a nice one are very high. Prices start at around £8,000, but realistically you're going to have to spend around ten to get yourself a nice one. I try and go for a Boxster S personally, but in all honesty there's nothing wrong with the ordinary model. I just think they're great value. I'll tell you something else which is great value. Surfshark. See what I did there, can't you? Now, Surfshark is a VPN service provider. It basically keeps you safe while you're online, so it protects your data and your details from being stolen by cyber thieves. It also hides your IP address so cyber thieves can't see it, but it's also very good if you use lots of streaming sites such as Netflix. You'll have probably experienced this before, but sometimes when you're on Netflix and you want to watch a show from the US or from some other territory or region, sometimes it won't let you. But with Surfshark, you can change your location settings so that Netflix thinks you're in that country. Then all of a sudden you can watch your favorite shows. I tend to use it here in England so I can watch some of my favourite American shows, but I also use it when I'm in Spain to catch up with my favourite British shows. In addition to that, it blocks malware, phishing, ads and other kinds of nastiness, which in turn can speed up your bandwidth and make your device run much more smoothly. You can download the app very easily from the App Store, and you can use it on an unlimited number of devices. It's definitely worth having if you frequently use public Wi-Fi, such as at train stations, fast food restaurants, airports, that sort of thing. If you click the link below in the video description, which is surfshark.deals forward slash hypecortos, and use the promo code hypecortos, you'll get three months totally free and 83% off. And we're talking a couple of quid a month here, so it's not some big expensive commitment. So if you do online banking, online shopping, or just want to stay safe while you're online, definitely check out Surfshark. 
Right, number five. Now, this one is the most expensive car on the list, but I'm just really intrigued by this car, so I thought I'd definitely include it. It's the Abarth 124 Spider. Now, the cheapest one that I could see was £16,000, so realistically, you're going to spend the best part of 20 to get yourself a nice one. But I just think they're great cars. You rarely see them. They look interesting. They sound great. And I still think, although it's the most expensive car on this list, I still think it represents great value for money because it's the most modern car on this list. And I also think they've got a good chance of becoming collectible. It's based on the Fiat 124 Spider, which is based on the Mazda MX-5, but they use their own engine. It's a 1.4 litre turbo, and it sounds epic. It growls and barks and snarls. Now, I've never actually driven one of these Abarths, but if it drives anything like the Fiat 124 Spider, then you're onto a winner. I just think it's a more interesting choice than a Z4 or an SLK or an MX-5. I'd definitely have one. And number six, the last one on this list, is the Nissan 370Z, or the Nissan 370Z, if you're watching this in States. Now, I was going to include the 350Z, but I just think they're a bit too old now, whereas the 370 still looks modern and current. Let's look at the facts. You've got a 3.7 litre V6, which produces 330 horsepower. It sounds great. It's a good looker and it should be reliable. Prices start from around £10,000, which I think is a bargain. You're into high road tax and you're into low MPG, but as a fun summer toy, you could do far worse. So there we go, six convertible sports cars that I'd actually buy with my own money. So I think that's about it. I'm off to spend the evening looking at an Autotrader, saving all these cars to my garage and then doing absolutely nothing about it. So cheers guys, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers.